Namu myoho renge kyo. Thank you so much for joining me. We're starting a new Go show today, and I want to preface this one with something, um, something, especially those who are starting out. If you're uh, new to your practice, new to Nichiren style school Buddhism, um, new to Buddhism in general, or maybe you've practiced for a few years, but on and off. Um, something we confront in our own lives as Buddhists is um, some form of criticism from those who are outside of Buddhism. This makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Buddhism at its core is about sloughing away, getting rid of those ideas that we maintain in our human existence that justify our existence. They justify our sense of self. They justify our sense of what we talk about and experience as the world around us. And we, especially now, we live in a time of heavy, heavy mimetic communication. Hardly anybody online or on television or in rooms and parties and wherever you're communicating, even in your own family, around the Christmas tree or what have you, uh, if you just back up a little bit and not listen to every word, but just listen to the flow of conversation, you'll start to hear these little mimetics that people are speaking. And the fact of the matter is that people don't truly think about what they're saying anymore. They really don't. Even ourselves. We tend to speak in learned phrases. And then whether or not we actually understand the meaning of those phrases or how they're used is, is less evident. And it actually, it's more evident when we listen to a room full of people in a restaurant or wherever talk, talking, that they themselves don't really know what they're saying. They're just exchanging what we used to call pleasantries. Have a nice day. How's your day going? Great to hear that. Hope you do well. Take care now. All right, all the pleasantries. Well, pleasantries have turned into, in our age of connectivity, into innumerable amounts, if you will, of little phrases like that, what we call mimetics. But mimetics are a lot more insipid than little pleasantries because they have sometimes exactly the opposite meaning than they sound as though they do. Um, this is the whole slippery slope of truth these days where if you say it often enough, people will just start repeating it as though it were fact, even without considering what it references or what it means, what it, what's implied by it. <clears throat> An example I used to use all the time was uh, have a nice day. Whereas when it first came out, it was kind of funny and gentle and everybody said it, but it didn't take long before, be, uh, before uh, have a nice day started to become an insult and then it went downhill from there to the point where now if you say have a nice day you they may be fighting words <laughs> so that's the nature of a meme a mimetic communication <clears throat> so i say all of this because um it obviates the nature of our modern human mind to be so critically attached to any little thing that we treat as a, a strong identifier of self, an identifier of not only who we are, as in Bob or Jane or Sylvain, but what we stand for, what values we hold dear, 
which is ironic since most memes people don't even know what they imply but they take them to imply something and then they fit that they carve that cork of a meme into their own little crevices and it builds upon itself to a vision of our own perception of self. This is ironic because if 20 people use the same meme, they all mean something different to those individuals. But it's a fragile underpinning. It's very fragile. And then Buddhism comes along and says, that's what's in your way. All of that elaborate, mimetic thinking and justification for a self that you're pushing out there to protect what? You don't even know. You're so busy creating this Trojan horse of a self that you never looked inside to see what the real you is. Well, that's a pretty heavy confrontation. And they had the same issue in Shakyamuni's day. Women can be enlightened. What are you, a nutcase? Shakyamuni ruffled a lot of feathers. Especially, people didn't forget that he came from privileged class. So he had a lot of battles. <clears throat> that didn't stop him from gaining followers and students, avid students who memorized everything he said and later to write them down as sutra. Right? So uh, Nitrin in this Go Show acknowledges that he too is going through these types of persecutions. But it's not because Buddhism's bad. If anything, it proves that Buddhism is exactly to the point. Remember, he's living through a transition of government from empirical to shogunate power, violent power. Samurai, right? Supreme authoritarian rule. It's just one step down from the, the imbued monarchy emperor kind of thinking that's a, a supernatural being. Now it's uh, more uh, human, but the, the supernatural factor may be out of the way, but it's replaced by an ultra-violent authoritarian rule so it's not dissimilar to a lot of what we're seeing today develop throughout the world this authoritarianship right so when you start to practice buddhism and certain things sometimes it seems like comes out of the woodwork why am i having all these difficulties why am i having these struggles it, it may not be people confronting you, but situations, ideas, uh, tendencies and conditions. Well, your karma is being rattled, for one thing. And as your karma is being rattled, so too is the karma of everyone around you and everything around you. So, yeah, I mean, Buddhism is like swimming for your survival out of a, the middle of a large body of water. If you don't expect to be splashing or making any noise or creating waves, then you're not swimming. So they kind of go hand in hand. I'm not trying to scare you out of practicing because the payoff is far in excess of any duress that you might have to work through. I'm just telling you to expect it. Expect that when you take action to do something, there is resistance. And if you don't experience resistance, that doesn't mean you're not practicing well. It just means that you have good fortune in certain aspects of your life. But don't get complacent, because before you know it, you'll hit an obstacle. And if you're not aware that that can happen, it can create a lot of problems for your practice. And I don't want you to lose steam. You need to look at any obstacles that arise in your, in your life as validation of your practice. Redouble your efforts right then and you'll get through those obstacles much quicker, much faster. They'll just appear and fall away. 
But if you neglect your practice or blame your practice for it, then those hardships might stay with you for a long time. None of us wants that. So please don't be dissuaded by obstacles. They are validation of your resolute mind and hard, focused practice. Okay? Be inspired by it. So, the name of this Go Show is On Practicing the Buddha's Teachings. So basically, Nichiren is going to uh, approach this problem head on. But he's going to speak in the rhetoric of the sutras and the teachings. And this is why I wanted to give you a preface so that you understand what, what all he's talking about. Okay? Here we go. On examination of the Lotus Sutra, we find that those who are born in this land and believe in this sutra when it is propagated in the latter day of the law will be subjected to hatred and jealousy even greater than that which arose in the lifetime of the thus come one. In that age, the master who taught and converted the people was the Buddha, and his disciples were great bodhisattvas and arhats. Moreover, the Buddha expounded the Lotus Sutra only after he had developed and trained the living beings who were to hear it, including the human and heavenly beings, the four kinds of believers, and the non-human beings, such as the eight kinds of beings. Still, many of them harbored hatred and jealousy. Now, in the latter day of the law, though the teaching, the people's capacity, and the time for propagation are in accord, we must expect all the more hostility. <clears throat> for this is the age when quarrels and disputes prevail, and the pure law is obscured and lost. This is a quote from an earlier, another teaching, actually. Moreover, the teacher is but an ordinary practitioner, and his disciples come from among evil people defiled by the three poisons. For this reason, people shun the good teacher and associate with evil teachers. Now, th there was quite a mic drop there. I'm going to get tired of using that analogy, I promise you. But For this is the age when quarrels and disputes prevail. Boy, can we see that in our environment. And the pure law is obscured and lost. Moreover, the teacher, right? You, me, Nichiren, is but an ordinary practitioner. And his disciples come from among evil people defiled by the three poisons. They're just people from everyday life, but they're defiled by greed, right? Avarice foolishness, right? Anger, manipulative, looking for a way around obstacles, very competitive. And those people, they don't like to hear somebody pure of heart teaching a direct truth. They can't affect that. And they're scared to death to be affected. Right? What's true about bullies, for instance? That essentially they're afraid. So, what is more, once you become a disciple or a lay supporter of the votary who practices the true Lotus Sutra in accord with the Buddha's teachings, you are bound to face the three types of enemies. Now, don't think enemies like uh, Warcraft. Think of enemies like from your own life, not necessarily people. Okay. Therefore, from the very day you listen to and take resolute mind and conviction in this sutra, you should be fully prepared to face the great persecutions of the three types of enemies that are certain to be more horrible now than after the Buddha's pa uh, now after the Buddha's passing. Although my disciples had already heard this, when both great and small persecutions confronted us, some were so astounded and terrified that they even forsook their resolute mind. Did I not warn you in advance? I have been teaching you day and night directly from the sutra, which says, quote, Since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound, even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more will this be so after his passing? You have no reason at all to be frightened 
when you see or hear that I have been driven from my dwelling place, wounded, and, having incurred the wrath of the rulers, sent into exile in distant provinces twice. So now that he's prefaced what this dialogue is about, he's going to adopt the question and answer method. So this, again, is another teaching. Question. The votaries who practice according to the Buddha's teachings should, quote, enjoy peace and security in their present existence. We've read that. Why, then, are you beset by the three powerful enemies? Good question. Answer. Shakyamuni Buddha faced the nine great persecutions for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. In the distant past, Bodhisattva never disparaging was likewise attacked with staves, tiles, and stones. Chu Dao Sheng was banished to a mountain in Shu Chou. The Tripitaka master, Fat Dao, was branded on the face, and the venerable Ariyashima was beheaded. The great teacher Tendai was opposed by the seven schools of the north and the three schools of the south, and the great teacher Dengyo was hated by the six schools of Nara. The Buddha and these bodhisattvas and great sages were all votaries of the Lotus Sutra, yet they suffered great persecutions. If you deny that they practiced according to the Buddha's teachings, then where can you find those who did? This is the age of conflict in which the pure law has been lost. Moreover, in this evil country, the ruler, his ministers, and even the common people are without exception tainted by evil. They have opposed the correct teaching and revered erroneous doctrines and teachers instead. Therefore, demons have burst into the country, causing the three calamities and seven disasters to strike again and again. So he's, he's using the previous thousands of years of teachings and he's bringing them to this argument to say that this, you shouldn't be astounded by this. This is, this is the, the course of events. You can't, put, <laughs> you can't put soap in water without repelling the dirt. There's a reaction. It's, it's proof, really. But, you know, it's, it can be confusing. So that's why I'm reading this, this go show. This is indeed an accursed time to live in this land. However, the Buddha has commanded me to be born in this age, and it is impossible for me to go against the decree of the Dharma king, and so, as the sutra dictates, I have launched the battle between the provisional and the true teachings, donning the armor of endurance, and girding myself with the sword of the wonderful teaching, I have raised the banner of the five characters of Myoho Renge Kyo the heart of the entire eight volumes of the Lotus Sutra. Then, drawing the bow of the Buddha's declaration, quote, I have not yet revealed the truth, end quote, and notching the arrow of honestly discarding the provisional teachings, I, end quote, I have mounted the carriage drawn by the great ox and battered down the gates of the provisional teachings, attacking first one and then another. I have refuted opponents from the eight and ten schools, such as the Nembutsu, the, the people who practice the Amida, they just chant Amida Buddha's name, the True Word School, the Zen School, and the Precept School. Some have fled headlong while others have retreated, and still others have been captured to become my disciple. I continue to repulse their attacks and to defeat them, but legions of enemies exist who oppose the single Dharma king and the handful who follow him. So the battle goes on even today. So what is he talking about when he's talking about the Dharma king and the Buddha has commanded him to be born in this age? Again, I, I, I remind you to, re to recall that Buddha is not a person. Buddha is the enlightened state available and extant in all of us right now. So really what he's doing is he's using other words to describe Ichinen Sanzen, his Ichinen Sanzen, his, 
his path of energies to manifest as him in that time, Nichiren. Just as you are made of innumerable countless reactions of energy to instantiate as who you are right now in this samsaric state, this, this experiential entity that you are. You can't change that. You can't predict that. It simply is. That's the way the energies have combined to manifest you. Right? You didn't have a choice in the matter. And that's all Nichiren is saying here. The Lotus Sutra is the teaching of Shakabuku, the refutation of the provisional doctrines. True to the letter of this golden saying in the end, Every last one of the believers of the provisional teachings and schools will be defeated and join the retinue of the Dharma King. The time will come when all people will abandon the various kinds of vehicles and take up the single vehicle of Buddhahood, and the wonderful and difficult to understand law alone will flourish throughout the land. When the people can all chant Namu Myo Horenge Kyo, the mind or the wind, sorry, the wind will no longer buffet the branches, and the rain will no longer break the clods of soil. The world will become as it was in the ages of Hu Tseng and Shen Nung. In their present existence, the people will, will be freed from misfortune and disasters, and learn the art of living long. You see, Buddhism at its root is always about living a full and complete life. Realize that the time will come when the truth will be revealed that both the person and the law are unaging and eternal. There cannot be the slightest doubt about the sutra's promise of peace and security in their present existence. Now, I need to clarify something because I heard you out there. The law of unaging and eternal. That's not the eternity that we hear religions talk about about our souls being eternal. It's not at all what's being talked about. What's being talked about is an, a condition, a condition, a life condition, if you will. The Buddha, the Buddha-ness, is the life process, and it is eternal. Not you, not me, not instantiations of temporary consciousness to perceive this amazing thing. That's temporal. That's mundane in the words of the sutras, or in the translations anyway. <clears throat> Question. I apologize, my throat is dry. Question. How should one practice if one is to be a, re uh, a resolute mind to the Buddhist teachings? Okay. Answer. The Japanese people of this age are one in their opinion of what practice accords with the Buddha's teachings. They believe that since all vehicles are opened up and incorporated in the one vehicle of Buddhahood, no teaching is superior or inferior, shallow or profound, but all are equal to the Lotus Sutra. Hence the belief that chanting the Nembutsu, Amida Buddha, Amida Buddha, Amida Buddha, embracing the true word teaching, practicing Zen meditation, or professing and reciting any sutra or the name of any Buddha or Bodhisattva equals following the Lotus Sutra. But no. But I insist, Nichiren writes, that this is wrong. The most important thing in practicing the Buddhist teachings is to follow and uphold the Buddha's golden words, not the opinions of others. Our teacher, the thus come one Shakyamuni, wished to reveal the Lotus Sutra from the moment he first attained the way. However, because the people were not yet mature enough to understand, he had to employ provisional teachings as expedient means for some 40 years before he could expound the true teaching of the Lotus Sutra. Now we know this is fact because if you look at historical record, the Kigan Sutra, or the Avatamsaka Sutra, or the Flower Garland Sutra, however you know it, the first teaching that Shakyamuni attempted uh, to offer his disciples, and it's a long sermon, uh, if you've ever read the Avatamsaka. Uh, it's, oh, 
it's it's such an, an incredible read um but it's all about the sensation and the accomplishment of enlightenment in very poetic and large uh, you know the typical sutra writing terms it's just uh, voluminous and repetitive but um he only taught it for a couple of weeks there's varying reports two weeks three weeks four weeks but not very long before he backed off because i'm sure he he saw that people weren't ready they were just confused and worse uh frightened so he started over again and uh this is why we know the five periods of the buddha's teachings because shakyamuni backed off and started with really um, basic teachings to open people's mind to possibilities that they had to understand before they could move on and then grasp newer more profound understandings and slowly walk them up to the point where he could then preach the lotus sutra which is what he was after all along but by the time he had he got to the lotus sutra he had created such a powerful foundation of understanding that even if the people of his own time didn't quite grasp it they had a um a framework to get there and he knew that one day people would evolve to have much greater capacity and if they studied which is why he said study all buddhist scholarship not just pick and choose even non-buddhist because when you do that and you get to the lotus sutra you will assuredly get it all right so in the immeasurable meaning sutra this is nichiren continuing which serves as an introduction to the lotus sutra the buddha drew the line between the provisional teachings and the true teaching and clearly distinguished the expedient means from the truth. He declared, quote, preaching the law in various different ways. I made use of the power of expedient means, but in these more than 40 years, I have not yet revealed the truth, end quote. The 80,000 bodhisattvas, including great adornment, understood perfectly why Shakyamuni had preached the provisional teachings demonstrated that they were nothing more than expedient means, and finally discarded them entirely. They expressed their understanding by declaring that one, quote, will in the end fail to gain unsurpassed enlightenment, end quote, by embracing any of the sutras that were preached before the Lotus Sutra, and that require countless kalpas of practice to attain Buddhahood. Finally, the Buddha was ready to preach the Lotus Sutra, the revelation section of his entire body of teachings, and stated, quote, The world-honored one has long expounded his doctrines and now must reveal the truth. End quote. He also warned, quote, In the Buddha lands of the ten directions, there is only the law of the one vehicle. There are not two, there are not three except when the Buddha preaches so as an expedient means, end quote, and taught, quote, honestly discarding expedient means, end quote, and, quote, not accepting a single verse of the other sutras, end quote. Thus, ever since that time, the wonderful and difficult to understand law, the law of the one vehicle of Buddhahood, has been the only teaching that enables all people to become Buddhas, Although no sutra other than the Lotus Sutra can provide even the slightest benefit, the scholars of the latter day claimed that all sutras must lead to enlightenment because they were expounded by the thus come one. Therefore, they arbitrarily profess resolute mind and conviction in any sutra that follow whatever school they choose. Whether true word, Nabutsu, Zen, tree, three treatises, Dharma characteristics, Dharma analysis, treasury, establishment of truth, or precepts. The Buddha said of such people, quote, if a person fails to have resolute mind and conviction, but instead slanders this sutra, immediately he will destroy all the seeds for becoming a Buddha in this world. When his life comes to an end, he will enter the Avicii hell, end quote. 
Thus, the Buddha himself concluded that one's practice accords with the Buddha's teachings only when one bases one's resolute mind and conviction firmly on the standard of these sutra passages, believing fully that there, quote, there is only the law of the one vehicle. So, that'll probably do it for this video. We'll continue as usual. Uh, an ensuing question is a good place to pause, and uh, we'll continue this in the next part two. So thank you for listening. Um, I appreciate your participation. Please keep your practice strong. Do not hesitate when you have a problem to take it directly to Gohanzan. Um, as you know, the various channels to support, if you can, I surely appreciate it. Um, I really need your support right now, and I'd like... As you can see, I'm putting things on the wall uh, on either side of the Guanzan, and, and I don't like to do that with the Butsudan. Uh, those are for audio. Uh, I'm trying to nail this audio down so it's of good quality. Ultimately, I'd like to be doing these videos in the school proper uh, with the, the larger Butsudan and Guanzan and all that. I've done a few videos in there if you've watched my channel for a while. Uh, but I, I haven't been able to get the money together to put heat in the school or air conditioning for the summer for that matter. And um, it's just very difficult to do videos uh, in the, that, that climate that keeps changing. It's not even good for the equipment. So uh, I'm doing them in my home right now. Um, and that's working out okay. Um, but there are things I can do in the school that I, I can't do in this home. Um, so I hope you'll. Uh, I hope that these things on the wall aren't a distraction for you. If they are, let me know, and, I, and I'll do something. Uh, I don't want to do anything to impede your practice. So, um, with that said, um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Um, we're getting really close to the beginning of another year here. I will be doing a, 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 a New Year's Gongyo, uh, late night Gongyo. If those of you are not familiar. Um, I do an abbreviated gongyo with a long daimoku shodai session. Um, and I try to time the end of the shodai to, uh, well, I'm central standard time here. So that'll vary for you. Um, but, uh, central standard time, um, at midnight, I will wrap up, uh, chanting and then do an abbreviated gongyo, which is once through the book. And then I'll chant a hiki daimoku between each meditation and then uh, have a brief uh, chanting session on the fifth meditation. And then I'll close out and that'll be our transition into a new anim, a new year, a new uh, revolution around the sun. <laughs> um, and that's always a kind of a special uh, ceremony, celebration. We close out the year strongly with Daimoku and we begin the new one with the teachings of the Lotus um, and recommit to our practice. So join me if you can and just watch the video when you can. Um, and uh, I'm sure I'll be posting some more videos before then. So I'll just see you in the next one. Okay. Namo Myo Thanks again. Bye-bye.